In this video, we're going to look at translating English expressions into algebraic expressions. First, we have the sum of a number in 8, the end. The sum implies addition. And so when we, when we see a word, there's the four key words. Sum is addition, difference is subtraction, product is multiplication, and quotient is division. Usually what we want to find is the word and, because that's going to tell us the first part and the second part. So the sum of a number, we'll call this number, it's our unknown. We can use x or a, q, pretty much any standard letter is fine. And indicates this is where we're going to put that the sum is the plus, and then 8 is just the number 8. So the sum of a number in 8 would translate to x plus 8. And that's all we're going to do. Even if there was something else to do, all it asks us to do is translate from uh, English into algebra, we're done. Letter B, the difference. So this is another keyword. Difference implies subtraction. Generally what we're looking for is that difference occurs at the and. So here's my and right here. That's where the subtraction is. It's going to be the difference of, here's the first part of the difference, 16. Here's the second part of the difference, twice a number. Twice indicates times 2. So we would say 2 times, and I'll get fancy here and use a different variable, we'll say n. So this would translate to 16 minus 2n. Letter C, 3 times the sum of a number and negative 13. Okay, so we have three times. What are we multiplying by three? We are multiplying by three a sum. Now, order of operations indicates that multiplication is supposed to happen before addition. But here, we want to take the sum and then multiply it by three. So we have to bypass the order of operations. And the only way that we can do that is using grouping symbols. So if we put the sum inside parentheses, that's saying, okay, here's these things added together. Then we're going to multiply by three. So uh, the fact that something is happening to the sum indicates we would need grouping symbols. The sum of a number, that would be x, and is where my plus sign would go, and then negative 13, negative 13. E. So here, because I have the double parentheses, I might just switch and use brackets instead. And our final result here would be 3 times the sum of a number, oh, I just said I was going to use brackets, and I use parentheses, bracket, plus negative 13. And again, we're just translating, so even though that looks kind of gross and awkward, we're done with the translation, the end. Next up, we have letter D, a number subtracted from 10. For this one, we do need to be really careful. Remember, for subtraction, order matters. 5 minus 2 does not give us the same result as 2 minus 5. So the way that subtraction and division questions are phrased can be sneaky, and we need to be careful. This has a number subtracted from. That means that we are taking a number away from something else. What are we taking a number away from? We're taking it away from 10. So this would actually translate to 10 minus our unknown number, which maybe I'll call A here. So it would be 10 minus A. So anytime you see subtracted from, that indicates that the first piece is the thing that's being subtracted. So it would be 10 minus A. Lastly here, we have uh, 4 more than 5 times a number. 4 more than. That indicates that we have something, and then we are going to add 4 to it. So this would indicate that it's going to be something plus 4. What are we adding 4 to? 5 times a number. So 5 times a number. We don't know which number, so we're going to say 5 times e. Putting this all together in the correct order would be 5e plus 4. As previously stated, subtraction can be tricky, which we're going to see here in letter F. Letter F says 6 less than the sum of a number and 8. 6 less than. So what does 6 less than mean? It means we're taking 6 away from something. So 6 less than indicates something minus 6. What are we subtracting 6 from? The sum of something. So even though it technically doesn't matter, just for mathematical sake, it kind of indicates that the sum should be inside parentheses. We want to do the sum and then take away 6 from it. Yes, order of operations would dictate that anyway, but just to make it mathematically sound, because something's happening to the sum, we'll put the sum inside parentheses. What, what are we looking at? The sum of a number. Let's use Q and 8. So putting this all together, because it's all out of order here, this would be Q plus 8 minus 6. And that would be letter F. So anytime you see less than or subtracted from, 
be really careful because that means that that first thing is being taken away from whatever happens after that. Letter G, we have seven less than, the sum of two consecutive integers. So here with the seven less than, that means that we're taking seven away from something. So it's going to be minus seven. Now we need to kind of take an aside here and talk about what consecutive integers are. So consecutive integers, those are integers that's one right after the other. So two consecutive integers, for example, would be 21 and 22, because there's no integers in between 21 and 22. Another example, negative 41 and negative 40, because there's no integer between negative 41 and negative 40, we would call those consecutive integers. If we don't know what the first one is, however, like we don't in letter G, uh, we have to use a variable to represent one of the integers. Usually we choose to, to represent the smaller one. So maybe we say, okay, I'm going to call the first consecutive integer. So if I have consecutive integers, maybe I call the first one x. Well, what's the relationship between the examples I gave? Uh, or I forgot the examples I used. We'll use 20 and 21. If I'm representing 20 with x, then how would I get uh, 21? Well, that would be x plus 1. I think another example I gave was negative 41 and negative 40. If I start out where x is negative 41, how would I get to negative 40? It would be x plus 1. So the first consecutive integer is x, and then the next one would be x plus 1. Other things that we could be given are consecutive odd or consecutive even integers. And so we just want to be careful and clarify what the difference between just consecutive integers and consecutive even integers or consecutive odd integers. If we're uh, asked to find consecutive even integers, that's talking about the numbers themselves being even, such as 2 and 4 would be consecutive even integers. 100 and 102 are consecutive even integers. So if the first one here for consecutive even integers is x, then the next one, so let's see, to get from 2 to 4, well, there's a lot of things we could do. So that's a bad example. Let's, let's go to the other example, 100 and 102. So if my first consecutive even integer is x, 100, how could I get to 102? I would have to add 2. So the next one would be x plus 2. Along those same lines, if we have consecutive odd integers, consecutive odd integers, uh, that would be like uh, 3 and 5 are consecutive odd integers. 21 and 23 are consecutive odd integers. So if I call the first consecutive odd integer x, how would I get to the next consecutive odd integer? So how do I get from 3 to 5 or 21 to 23? I would need to add 2. So the next one would be x plus 2. And I know what you're thinking. A lot of my students think this. You're thinking, but, but it, they're odd. So how can you add 2? Shouldn't you add 1 or 3? Well, the difference between any two odd numbers that are consecutive is 2. It takes 2 to get to the next odd number, so it would be x and x plus 2. Okay, but back to letter G. So we have 7 less than, we're taking away 7. The sum, so again, there's something happening to the sum. I might want to put it in grouping symbols. That is optional. It is not wrong to exclude them. It's not wrong to include them. Uh, the sum of two consecutive integers. So if I call that first one x, the next consecutive integer is x plus 1. So here's the first consecutive integer. Here's the second one. We want the sum of that. Uh, being subtracted by 7, so it would be minus 7. I put a lot of grouping symbols in there. It's also correct to not have any of them or to just have one set of them. In this case, it doesn't affect anything because they, they, they're just kind of there. So you can see, here's a consecutive integer, here's my sum. Okay, moving on to letter H. Whew, that was a lot. The quotient of a number in 8. Quotient implies division, and the two pieces that are being divided are a number, and the other one is 8. When we represent division, typically in algebra, we don't use the little horizontal line segment and two dots. We use a fraction. So that's what we'll do here. So the number, the unknown, is our numerator, and 8 is our denominator. And again, it's not wrong. If you do use that, it would just be 8, uh, sorry, a divided by 8. It would just look like that. Just in algebra, we typically don't use this symbol. We, we use fractions instead. Letter I, the product. Product is one of those special words. So we're looking for an and here to separate the first piece of the product from the second. The product of a number and negative 3. So that's where I know the multiplication is going to happen. And then we're going to take that we're going to increase it by 10. 
Here, again, something's happening to the product. You might want to use grouping symbols. They're very optional here. Usually with multiplication, I don't, but it, it's not wrong too. So we have the product of a number in negative 3. So we could say y times negative 3 increased by 10 plus 10. This is a very rare case where I might not do a direct translation just because this is very awkward. I might just rewrite it and say negative 3y plus 10. Just kind of switch it around. That's still the product. I just switch the order of the two numbers. We're allowed to do that with multiplication. You can switch the order of the factors and not change the outcome. Lastly, letter J, 85% of a number. It's tempting to want to use the percent sign, but it's technically mathematically not appropriate here. What we do is we would take 85% and we would convert it to something that it is equivalent to, either the decimal form, in which case you would take 85 and divide by 100, which would give you 0.85, or you can convert it to its fraction, which is where you take the 85 and you actually put it over 100. And then from there you might want to simplify and you'd get 17 over 20. Most people opt for the decimal, and that's very appropriate in the situation. So 85% of a number, that would be 0.85 times m or x or q or whatever you want to use there.